Well, hey, YouTube. I've heard of singing a duet with yourself, but this is amazing, ridiculous and amazing. Uh, it's Dimash, Olimpico, Ogni Pietra, and I'm going to be reacting to it. Actually, I just reacted to it. And after my first reaction, I thought I would love to film this. And um, it's got so many amazing lessons for singers. And so I'm going to go through it right now and uh, kind of give you some ideas of what he's doing and what might help you. Hey there, I'm Mike Goodrich, and I'm with The Inner Singer, and that is my company. And uh, thanks for watching. Let's jump right into this, okay, shall we? It's going to be fun. This is pretty amazing. I'm sure you've seen it. You know, a lot of people are doing um, reactions to his song S.O.S., which is also amazing, but this thing really grabbed me. So let's, uh, let's uh, jump into it, shall we? So he starts right there on a D4. So obviously tenor range, right? He's singing as a tenor right now. So that's the D4. He's in his chest voice pretty much there and comes down. He's got an amazing low range. He's got an amazing every range. Uh, but anyway, so that's just to give you an idea. So um, let's keep going here. Now. That's an E natural four. I know I'm going to stop and start a lot because I'm not just doing this. Um, actually, I'm not doing this at all to be funny. I'm not doing this at all to show my ridiculous reactions or anything like that. When I do these, I actually want them to help you. Uh, I actually I want to point out things that he's doing that are really, really good that can help you with your voice, whether you're a man or you're a woman. And uh, if you haven't seen this song, well, if you haven't seen this song, you're probably not watching this video because why would you care? But um, you know that he's singing right now in his tenor range, and he will be singing in a soprano range in a second. Um, but anyway, for you, now I want you to hear the difference. This is really, really great, especially for your tenors and baritones right now. Now, it's the same thing for the women, but in a different part of your voice. But for the tenors and baritone right now, the way he goes from that, this D, and listen to the lift he gets on the E natural. Listen here. We'll start again. We're going to kind of meticulously go over this. Now, do you hear how it goes? That's more of a mix he's going into on that E natural, on that E4, okay? More chesty there. It's chesty there, but it's a mix, okay? So you hear the difference. Okay, let's go. That was an F sharp, and it was pretty much wide open, you know? Let's listen to that again just for fun. And, and that E flat's pretty open as well. By open, um, I don't even mean open ish. I mean, it really sounds like those. It sounds like he's taking those mainly in chest voice, but it's really, really easy for him and it's in line and it's in balance and it's not pulled. It just happens he has a very unique ability to, uh, to sing those notes without yelling. And Clearly, he can take his chest voice up a little higher than we usually recommend because usually you want to be in your mix by this E, F, F sharp. Um, let me listen to that one more time. It goes by really quickly. I want to make sure that he's not, I don't know if that's, I want to make sure he's not mixing because I don't want to give you the wrong information. Really, really hard to tell. That could be a mix. What I just did is a mix. His doesn't sound as mixy, but it may well be because it certainly sounds easy and looks easy. Okay, so let's continue. Let's let's say for 99% of the guys that are watching this, you should probably mix that. It's going to be just as strong, just as loud, but it's not going to be pulled. Okay, because most people, most men 
have a propensity to pull their chest voice up too hard on an F sharp if they're singing open-ish. Watch the video on, on, that I did on belting, and that'll show you what I mean by that, because that's more of a belt that he just did right there, okay? So let's continue. Okay, that's an F. Got a little bit of a split resonance there. So it's kind of writing, it's kind of mixed. Ah, okay, it's kind of mixed, it's not, ah, it's not yelled, okay. Man, he's got good low notes. Da, da, da. He's got way better low notes than I have. That's great. Uh, let, let, let me <laughs> emphasize he has way better high notes than I have too. <laughs> so we not just better low notes. That was a G. Can't let that slip by. And that's pretty belty. The A flat back to the G. <clears throat> but it sounds, it definitely sounds more mixed. It's certainly not a yell. It's certainly not raw gut chest. And it's got a little bit of a split resonance where you hear, you hear that, you, you hear the mix part of it. So it's not, it's not a yelled G, you know, it's much more of a split resonance. So sort of like I showed you on the F. I don't know what the lyric is, but you get the idea. So it's not, it's not splatted and yelled. So really, really good. But this guy has a real uncanny ability to disguise the first bridge as if it doesn't exist. Now, when he goes into the second bridge, you can, you can tell, but man, he's, he, he really can disguise that sucker in the first bridge like it doesn't, like it's not even there. Okay. So it's in B flat, he's on, he's on a tenor high B flat, B flat four. And um, that's actually, he's, I would say he's doing that more. Yeah, that's almost more of a Broadway-ish belt on a B flat, which is a really good trick. It's in there like an operatic B flat. It's got a little bit of that. Um, Opera composers write for, it was an odd segue, huh? Opera composers write for the shifts in resonance. And um, audiences want to hear that. Singers want to sing that. They want to feel it. It's awesome. It's fun. For pop musical theater, they don't really write for that shift in resonance. And it's usually disguised. Now, this may well just be a choice that he, I'm sure it's probably a choice that he makes. I mean, clearly, I think this kid can probably do anything. Um, but so that's a little bit more of a, obviously, a pop musical theater belt on that B flat. He's in, he's obviously in the mix, but it's not like, uh, I wish I had a Pavarotti B flat to show you how it just goes in more. It's more of an operatic sound than he's doing right here. Now, but he's about to go up a little higher, so listen to this. Now, that is a high C, and that's a very operatic high C. Um, I said in my last video when I, uh, I did a, a reaction to uh, Brendan Urey, who I adore his voice, uh, and it, it inspired me to do a compilation uh, video on tenor high Cs, which I will definitely put this Dimash high C in, because you can tell that's a, that's a very operatic. If, you, if, I, if I put that 
next to like Luciano Pavarotti or some other great high seas, you would hear that, oh my gosh, that is not a Broadway belty, even a pop high C. He has now kind of gone into kind of a Andre Bocelli kind of vibe, okay? Really, really great. Here we go. And now, so he's on a, this is like um, ridiculously amazing. So, so that tenor high C is a C5, okay? Considered an extremely high note for a tenor, especially an operatic tenor, right? Not so much as pop, they're knocking those notes all the time, but operatic tenors are using a little bit more, a little bit more vocal cord mass and a little bit more body, a little bit more, um, a little bit more bottom in it because they need to for the cut over those huge orchestras that they have. Pop singers can sing on a lighter chord setup, a lighter production, and not have so much weight in the voice, and they don't have to worry as much about the balance of resonance because they're using microphones. So most pop singers, when you hear a high C, it, it may be impressive, but it's not as, as well balanced as an opera singer needs to be, okay? This guy, on the other hand, is very well balanced um, on that high C. It's a terrific note. Um, and then the funny thing is, when he goes into his soprano sound, it's almost like a, a counter tenor, right? He goes to that, now he goes to the, he's on the tenor high C, C5, and then it actually sounds as if he drops down, but he actually goes up to the D5, but listen to the sound of it because he switches vocal qualities and goes from where he has a tremendous amount of leverage as a man singing a tenor in a tenor high C. That's got some bite and some strength and it's like really fun to sing. But when he goes into a soprano sound, he drops the weight out and he goes up into more of a lyric soprano. And a soprano on this D natural is not gonna have anywhere near the strength that a tenor has on this C5. So a soprano on a D5 is not gonna have as much strength as a tenor on a, on a, on a, <laughs> on a C5, unless she's belting it, like a, like a Broadway belt or pop belt or something like that. But in this instance, this is a legit sound, legit meaning more of an operatic sound that he's going into, and it's amazing. Uh, and it, it's, uh, it's, it's incredible that he can do that. And, but listen to the sound. It really is the illusion of going down, but he's going up. Okay, now that, I wish I knew these notes. Let me figure them out. Okay, so he just came down. Now, now, women that are listening to this, if there are any classical women listening to this, you can really take a page out of that because he is doing what a lot of classical teachers don't want you to do, um, but, you always, but you should. He's beginning to dip down into his chest and actually mixing on that. He is on an E flat, E, F sharp, G, F sharp, four. And you can hear it's it's very much it's very much like a soprano singing, right? So he is really, really primarily completely in his head voice. But as he comes there, he's in a mix, and then he's really, really heady. But now listen, listen to the sound. It's exactly like a soprano or a mezzo soprano would sound. This is really, really cool. I have no idea what the words are, but now I don't sound like a soprano. He's he's able to to do this gorgeous heady quality down that low with that kind of leverage and actually sound like he is a soprano. But that's what he's doing. So it's very heady here. And coming in a little bit more on that F sharp, but not like 
like when he's really pounding it out with when he's singing as a tenor. You know, this is really heady from the top down, finding that leverage from the top down. Now, you women that are classical singers could take a real page out of that if you have trouble in that kind of a break area. The most classical people uh, teaching women will have them bridge right around this E flat 4, E natural, F area if they let them sing in their chest at all. And... Um, of course, that's a little early to bridge, but in classical music, it's kind of written that way. So, you know, you have to learn how to negotiate that. But he does that, obviously, incredibly well. I have a feeling this is going to be a long video. Sorry, I'll, I'll try and uh, speed up a little. Okay. D5 again. Again, just in a soprano sound. Pure head voice like a, like a counter tenor. Now that's that's pretty darn amazing. I mean, I, I can't let that go by. He's on a G4 there, up to the tenor high C, C5. But he is singing that so much like a soprano. As as a as a man, it's hard to get that kind of a sound. You hear some Wagnerian tenors do it, but that kind of a sound on that G with that much strength, but with that kind of a sound, with that pure heady sound. It's really, really cool. Yeah, yeah nice. It's, it's an F5, sung exactly like a soprano would sing it. For an F5 is not a terribly high note for a soprano. Um, and as you'll see as he goes on, it's not even a terribly high note for him. Pretty nice spin, very, very round tone. Balance of resonance, really, really nice. The thing that is really fun about this is that he, he, even though he's using kind of an operatic sound, like a soprano or a countertenor, like I said, it's not, it's, it's more of a pop style where he's really blending this pop idea with, uh, with a classical voice. I would say it would, a, a soprano would have to be a real, have a real ability to stylize in pop to be able to do what he's doing, even though theoretically it should be easier for her to sing in that range because it's very natural to her and it's not. I mean, there are very, very few guys that can actually pull this off like that. And I mean, really, if you close your eyes, you didn't know you were listening to a man, you would, you would think that it was a woman. And that's true of really great counter tenors uh, who are able to do that, who sing in can really, really connected sounds with chord closure and get a lot of body in that part of the voice. It's really an amazing thing. But you'll notice that, you know, if you're familiar with any opera singers, it's, it's an operatic sound, but it's not an operatic style. You know, it's, it's, it's very pop. It's very, I mean, he stops and sustains, you know, obviously once in a while, but it's very conversational in that it's very straight tone. Da, 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 da. I'm not going to demonstrate these because I don't have those notes, but, it, but that kind of a thing. And then he lands and spins it. Um, but it's really cool. I mean, it's a cool combination of sounds like an opera singer, soprano, but singing the pop style. Now that was really, really cool. So he comes down to this. There it is. Um, so he's on the G4, down to the C4, which is middle C, which ordinarily would sound like ma, ma. And he sung it like that in the first half of the song. But listen to what it sounds like now, the way he comes down from his head voice. Man, that's 
So that, that sound, it, it's so soprano-y. I cannot make that sound. I can't. I have to really close it and sing softly, but man, he gets a lot of body on that. It's crazy. Man. He, he, yeah, well, I think we all know I can't do that, but uh, man, it's very, very cool. Oh, and I, I should say that for you classical women, coming down to that C4, which would be pretty much in your chest voice, he's actually pulling his head voice all the way down to that, which is impressive. Now, for you classical women, that's probably not the best idea in the world because it's going to be so low for you. Um, to pull your head voice all the way down. He, because he's a man, has that kind of leverage down there. So it's, it's, uh, it's like, don't try this at home, right? <laughs> the B flat. And again, you know, there's something so cool about that because he is, again, it's more, it's, it's, a, it's a classical sound for a soprano, but not. It's actually a little bit more mixed, not quite as round. So it's hugely impressive, but it's a little bit more of a pop style, almost like a soprano would sing pop if she was singing in her head voice and not belting up on that B flat five. And I have a feeling it's gonna go up. Yeah, now, oddly enough, again, just like when he was singing with his tenor voice, that high C is a friggin' killer soprano high C that does sound very exciting and very legit, meaning it sounds operatic. That is really cool. You can hear the difference between this B flat, which is a little bit edgier than a, than a soprano would use, um, but... Um, a, but a great sound. But then the high C is very much like a soprano would kill to have a high C like that. Listen to this again. This is really amazing. Okay, wait, hold on. I've got... I'm getting a call from my son, so let me stop, and then I will edit this out, okay? <laughs> Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I had to let my son in. I'm out in the outside studio, and uh, he called me to let him in the house. So, anyway, so let's get back to this. That's the B flat again. And if it was a soprano B flat, if we were singing more operatic, it'd be a little bit rounder, right? And it would, it would. Um, it's a little, it's a little, it's a little like he took the tenor B flat when he was belting more like a Broadway thing, right? But now listen what he does with this high C. Hello. Now that's a pretty darn killer soprano high C, you know, sung by a guy, which is amazing. Counter tenors oftentimes don't have that kind of bite in the voice. Um, but man, this guy has some bite and some edge and he's going to go up. Here we go. He's on, uh, that was, oh my God, that was, uh, that was C6 and he's about to go up to D6, I believe. Yes, indeed. D6. Pretty darn good spin on the vibrato up that stratospherically high. Uh, I mean, what the heck can you say? Probably most sopranos would like say, hey, I'll take it. <laughs> if I could say ID, I'll take it like that, right? I mean, pretty friggin' amazing. Okay, uh, let's go. Man, okay, so he's down on the one, two, three, G3. 
Guy's got more bottom in his voice than I do down there. And then he's got more up here. I'm getting really depressed doing this. I'll <laughs> it's like, oh my God, this guy's killing me. Unbelievable. Here we go. I love the passion in this pin. It's just boom, you know, like really, really, really great. Nice spin. Even in the recitative part, this would be more conversational recitative. Um, and you, you can hear the vibrato in it. I mean, it's not, it's not a dull, da, 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 it's da, 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 boom. I mean, it's just getting all excited. This is unbelievable. I love great singing. Yeah. And again, that F, that's got a nice split in it. I can hear that a little better in this than I could in the beginning, but that's, you know, it's got a nice split in it. Not, in other words, not, it's not that, right? It's that, but better. <laughs> and man, when he rounds that off, I mean, it's clearly an E at the end. It's a diphthong in that thing. And listen to how that gets in there, man. Listen to how he finishes that with that, that bite. That, and there, there he sounds like an opera singer. Went right at the end of that note when he finishes that. Just right at the end. And he goes into that E part of it. Man, that's good. Okay, man. And again, you can really hear it now on that G, uh, G4. He's really in there. That's, that's in a, a beautiful mix. And he's, it's right in. It's spinning. It's the... You know, it's... Man, loving it. Loving it. So you tenors and baritones can really take a page out of that. Um, because that's the, that's the way to do those notes. Really, really, really is. And that was, that's a pretty darn good middle C on that E4. And here we go again. We're almost wrapping it up here. Okay, show off. So uh, that's uh, another C, gorgeous C6. Thank you. Won't be demonstrating that one for you. Thank you very much. Um, I don't think I've ever sung that high ever in my life. Um, I've sung a B above high C. Not that anybody would ever want to hear it or care. But uh, hey, what the heck. But not this. Now, now it's starting to sound a little bit more operatic. Now, now he's starting to sound like he's uh, singing Turandot or something. That's uh, pretty darn impressive. Really, really cool. Okay, goodness, where are we now? Still the high C. Friggin' glorious high C, isn't it? My God. Okay, now you're just showing off. Okay, it's an E6. Okay, I, I shouldn't have talked right in the middle of it. Let me, I'll shut up. Let's go back and hear that one again. This is, for all of you musical theater folks out there, if you've seen Phantom of the Opera, Christine, um, in one of the numbers, sings an E, that E natural. Uh, it's the E6 above high, above, 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 mm, 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 above the soprano high. It's, it's, it's really late while I'm doing this. I'm actually kind of tired. Um, above the E, the C, six to the E six and they're sopranos, right? They're lyric sopranos usually. And that's a sound bite. That's how infrequently women are able to sing that on a consistent basis, uh, that they wouldn't want to do it eight shows a week. So that's actually a sound bite. They sing all the way up to it and they're blocked way, way upstage. So when they sing that, they're basically opening their mouth and the sound guy is playing this note that they have sung at some other time. Um, 
And it may just be one woman saying it one time and everybody gets to sing it, because quite frankly, a woman singing an E natural above high C up there, they're all going to sound pretty darn similar. Um, so that's how impressive this is. For uh, It's impressive for a woman. It's ridiculous for a guy. I mean, so let, let's hear it again and I won't talk. And even get some vibrato going in there. Oh my God. Really? Okay. So, I mean, what can you say about that? I mean, only a complete jerk would say anything bad. <laughs> what, what the hell is there to say? Um, hopefully this was helpful for you, men and women, in terms of showing some of the great things that he does, probably instinctively. Maybe he learned all this stuff. I don't know. Um, I, if he learned it, I certainly don't want to take it away and say, you know, he just is a natural. He's probably a natural, but he probably worked his tail off too to, uh, to develop all this stuff. Um, stylistically amazing, vocally amazing. Um, so anyway, yeah, uh, if, you, if you like this kind of thing, and who couldn't possibly like this kind of thing, uh, but if you like me reacting to this kind of thing, then uh, please subscribe. I do a lot of technique videos as well. Uh, I'll be doing performance videos and, and mindset videos as well. I've got a lot of technique videos. But I love these reaction videos because they're really fun. Um, and I get to sit and watch great singing, you know, and who doesn't love that? So, yeah, please subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Please like it if you liked it. Please comment. Uh, let me know what you might want to see. Let me know what you like, what you didn't like. If you, got, if you have any suggestions, something you'd like me to do, happy to do it. And... Uh, Check out the rest of my videos, and uh, if you want to um, check out my website, there's a link down at the at the bottom there where you can get a free video series that isn't anywhere on YouTube. It's not anywhere, actually, and it's my free vocal accelerator video series, singing accelerator series, actually. forgot what I called it. I'll tell you, it's late here. Um, so the link's down there, and I've got a really, really cool ebook that I wrote called The Five Biggest Mistakes That Singers Make While Singing in Their Mix and Belting and How You Can Avoid Them. And that link will be down below as well. So anyway, I will see you soon. Videos every Wednesday. And I hope you enjoyed this. And, and oh my God, this was crazy, wasn't it? Okay, I'll see you soon. Thanks.